lovers and mothers Hi. friends lovers mothers and all of the above thank you for joining us this is five minutes with robert naser i am robert naser and you are here joined with your beautiful co-host and wife amy naser that's right that's right <laughs> Ooh, you have you have preceded me, precluded me, pre something me, and today is Sunday, May 9th, the one hundred and twenty ninth day of twenty twenty one. Your best year yet. There are two hundred and thirty six days remaining to make it outstanding. Two hundred and thirty days until Christmas, twenty twenty one. Shall we start the Christmas carols? We'll wait just a bit. And one hundred and seventy five <laughs> days until Halloween. And yes. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers listening. We have a lot of mothers listening. Yes. We, we have a, a good deal of, of women in the audience. We even have a lot of um, furry, you know, mothers to furry animals. Mothers to furry animals <laughs> as well. We have a lot of pet mothers or mothers of pets. <laughs> but no, we have a good high female audience. You know, talk radio and talk shows, the, the audience tends to be skewed male. But I think we've got a pretty good mix. I think we're, I don't know if we're 50-50, but we're, we're good. So I know there's a lot of mothers listening out there today. I know some of the mothers are mothers who I hold near and dear to my heart. In particular, the uh, mother and stepmother of my daughter, one of whom is here. My <laughs> own mother, who I spoke to this morning. And if you're listening, hi, mom. <laughs> Stereotypical hi, mom out there. But happiest Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Uh, coincidentally, or ironically, or controversially, mm -hmm. on this day in history, the FDA approved the first birth control pill. Yay! Yes. <laughs> leading, leading to people well, deciding when they were going yeah. to be mothers. Right. And that's important, especially. And that is important. Even in a case if, you, if you're a mother who already has a family and, you know, two is enough, three is enough, seven's enough, whatever it is, um, you get to... Um, you know, have that control over your reproductive system. <laughs> Unless you're a catholic. <laughs> catholic. Or is, that, or is that pronounced Catholic? In any event, <laughs> yes, yes, today is the day that the birth control pill was approved by the FDA. Also today is William Martin Joel's 72nd birthday. So a happy birthday to the piano man, Billy Joel, 72 years old today. Wow. Yes. And if we have, oh, we have folks coming into the chat, so let us know in the chat, what is your favorite Billy Joel song? Hmm. The sixth best-selling recording artist in the United States, the third best-selling solo artist, six Grammys, 23 nominations. Billy Joel has sold 150 million records. So happy birthday, Billy Joel, and... Uh, I don't actually know what my favorite Billy Joel song is. I kind of go back and forth between the really dark stuff like All for Lena or like Pressure, yeah. you know, High yeah, Energy. Right. But then I end up, I always seem to end up back in River River of Dreams. Mm -hmm. Just nice. So damn nice. It is. It's good stuff. Super sweet. What are we listening to this week? You know, I'm, I'm, I've got nothing. I'm pure consumption this week. I've been listening to music. I've been listening to shows about music. Like the Yes Music podcast. Everybody knows Yes is my favorite band. Uh, and we've been watching a lot of The Golden Girls. So it's been a pretty <laughs> casual week. On Thank both you the, for being a friend. Yes, both on, <laughs> on television and on audio. So tell us in the chat what you've been listening to this week. What did we miss? What should we be listening to? Uh, related to what we'll be talking about this week, I do have some links in the show notes of, of tasty things for you to consume. So I did listen, for example, to part two of Yarin Brooks' series on Yarin's Rules for Life. Part two was not as uh, specific as part one, in which he gave four very specific rules. Part two was more about your relations with other people. Still pretty good. Give it a listen. But links to both parts are in the show notes. Also in the show notes are the links to two talks by Alex Epstein. Okay. Uh, how to leverage objectivism to become a leader in your field and intellectual persuasion. Mm. Um, and, and I plan to talk about this today. We'll see if we get to it. the question of, well, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? And the best single answer I found to that is in Alex Epstein's first talk of the two that I listed, how to leverage objectivism 
to become a leader in your field. We've talked about that once before, and we will talk about it again. Find those in the show notes as we get to that. Oh, we have a uh, Jim is chiming in. His favorite Billy Joel songs include uh, Six Weeks on Paris Island and Always a Woman. Yes. Very good. Yes, she's always a woman to me. <laughs> Great song. Great song. I mean, the guy is Billy Joel, musical genius. Yes. Well, uh. yeah. And, you know, we, we talked, I think last time, we talked about uh, modern romance and the kind of cynicism and snark out there. And the topic of high-maintenance women comes up as opposed to high-value women. Oh. So listen to the song, She's Always a Woman, and you'll okay. find out w- the difference. Uh, is there men who are, there are men who are high-maintenance. and men There are who men are, who are wait, equally. Explain all of this. I'm even though sure she's, always, means. <laughs> she's always a man doesn't sound right. Well, I don't know. It's 2021. That could be too. Yeah. No, it's just uh, makes the point that the, the woman that he's singing about is not um, simple. Mm. That she's, she's very dynamic. She's a, a woman of strong feelings and moods and persuasions. And um, she's many, many things, but she is always a woman to Billy Joel, when he's singing about her, it is a great song. And uh, and uh, I thought I saw another one on there. Oh, you may be right. How yes, yes. You, you may be right. A great rocker. That That's is the great. thing about Billy Joel is that he can do moods, but he's also a great rocker. He can just rock out. Right. You know, see him live, watch some <laughs> of the live clips on YouTube, and then uh, you see why he's sold 150 million records. Right. And, and uh, I always like um, moving out. Is, is a, I know you, a... you go back to the moving out song. A lot. I do. <laughs> that, that was one of those quirky really ones to me. It's stuff. It's because great. he was he was really playing the Italian thing really hard at that point. Yeah. You know, with uh, songs like "Scenes from an Italian yes. Restaurant." Rebecca just mentioned that actually. Hey, oh, Rebecca. Yeah. Oh, that one's great fun. And uh, and uh, you know the accordion that he would bring into the music during that time of uh, the Stranger and Fifty Second Street. Great albums. Mm. Real breakthrough albums, okay. too, for his career. But yes. enough Billy Joel. <laughs> well, at least for now. Yeah. Um, I did want to report on my sadness journaling. Yay! Sadness journaling. Now, folks <laughs> folks who heard the Thursday night show, that was an extension of this. Last Sunday, I talked about sadness, and I gave us the homework assignment for the week to journal. And this mm-hmm. was free flow journaling. on. And the question was, you might remember, the question was, how do I feel? Mm. So my sadness journaling and answering the question, how do I feel? On Thursday, we expanded that to the range of emotions and the role of emotions in life. And I've got to say, I had mixed results. And I realized that I am quick, even in allowing myself to free associate or flow or journal or brainstorm, I'm too quick to jump from it is Mm-hmm. to I should. Mm. Here's how I feel. Here's what's going on. And here's what I should do about it. Interesting. And uh, So you want to fix it. It's it's the funniest <laughs> thing, because you're right. I want to fix it. It's the stereotype. There, uh, there was a skit a few years ago, a video, and I actually put the link to this in the show notes, but most of you will already know this one. The video is called, It's Not About the Nail. <laughs> If you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you'll have to watch it after yes. we wrap up here. It's not about the nail. And it plays on the old stereotype that women want to talk about their problems. Men, as soon as they hear a woman mention a problem, don't want to hear it. They want to solve it. <laughs> oh, well, here's what you need to do. Well, no, I didn't want you to solve my problem. I just wanted to tell you about how this went. Well, yeah, but what you should do is... <laughs> you know... It- I mean, I understand the importance of talking nuance and, uh, no, I, I want to, you know, give all the 15 perspectives I have about this particular situation. I want you to listen. <laughs> I don't want to fix it. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> it's not always about fixing it. Yes. So this exercise, this, this, how do I feel, this journaling that I was doing <laughs> reminded me to not go so quickly to, yeah, here's what I should do next. Mm. And that follows the discussion that we had, just as in regard to your emotions, there's a place yeah. between repressing and wallowing. So too, in journaling, I found it's a challenge to introspect 
without immediately going you know prematurely too quickly to problem solving it's that whole sit with your sadness idea sit with it find out what it's got to say what yeah. lessons you need to learn and and for introspecting more broadly so yes I've practiced spending more time with my thoughts. Just as I've advised sitting with your emotions for a bit and then finding out their causes and their lessons before letting them go, so too your introspective thoughts. Among other things, one thing I've learned or observed is this. If there's something you need from other people mm -hmm. and you don't think you should have to ask for it. Oh. You can say that. Oh, you can say that? You can say that. Well, you don't want to say, I don't think I should have to ask for it. Right. Say something like, you know, it's not really the same if I ask for it. Which is a little different. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you ask somebody, for example, for affection mm -hmm. or even attention... You know, it can lose all the magic if you have that sense of they weren't really wanting to pay attention to me or be affectionate with me. They were only doing it because I asked. So, yeah, but it's hard. Be. But it, there's that contradiction of, well, if you have to ask somebody to volunteer something, are they really volunteering it? Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can step outside both the demand and the not receiving it at all mm -hmm. and just explain, you know, it would mean more to me if every now and then you would offer this whatever it is attention or affection or make dinner or whatever the thing is without me asking for it are you trying to tell me something i'm not trying to tell you anything <laughs> you're an ace in all of this i uh, know <laughs> but i just want to make that point because this came out of my exercise of realizing yeah don't immediately go to fix it and the converse of that is don't immediately assume that you can't fix it Mm, right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's an important experience of, you know, not necessarily dwelling or mulling or moping about it, but sometimes you have to give yourself a little time and um, that that your solution to it is going to be so much better if you do, if you sleep on it, in other words, for instance, mm -hmm. um, things like yes. that. But be willing to say it. It's funny, we, we've said that it's in a slightly different context before. And I'm sure that you have said exactly what Mary Aline just commented, which is, but people can't read minds either. <laughs> so true. And uh, we can tie that back to Billy Joel, who has a song called, Tell Her About It. <laughs> and that's exactly right. Yes. Thank you, you Billy Joel. <laughs> yes. And thank you, Mary Aline. <laughs> yeah, Amy and I had a discussion earlier in the car. Mm -hmm. What were yes. we doing in the car? We were driving. We were driving to <laughs> Ramshorn. Right. A popular chain diner yeah. in the Midwest. I don't know how far out Ramshorn gets. Not sure. But we were going to breakfast. We were going to breakfast. To we were going to breakfast. Inside the sit restaurant. Sit in a restaurant. And, and eat through our masks. No, I'm kidding. We actually had our masks off <laughs> to eat. We, uh... <laughs> It was crazy, crazy. And, and this is a lead into to something a little deeper, but yesterday we had lunch in a graveyard. Yes. Yes, with all the ghosts. And there were all sorts of features of this lunch that were really outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, our host for the lunch brought lunch. Yes. And that was super sweet. Uh, I don't know if Jennifer is in the comments right now, but uh, we won't say who we're talking about, Jennifer, because we wouldn't want Jennifer to... Uh, <laughs> No, think that we're talking about her without Jennifer giving us permission. Jennifer wouldn't like that if we That's talked right. about her. But we had lunch in a graveyard, and the, the, among the many high points of yes. this day together were hugs. Yes. And uh, it was miraculous. I promised that once things settled down and we were all vaccinated, we all had our extra two weeks in and all that stuff, that there would be long hugs and firm handshakes. And we had lunch in a graveyard yesterday, and there were hugs. Mm -hmm. There were Not, no masks. Right. Um, and it was great. And then this morning, again, out in the car, go to the diner, Mother's Day breakfast, hugs and handshakes. <laughs> and uh, it was a beautiful thing. It was amazing. Oh, my goodness. 
It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And and I had to, I, I got to have some diner breakfast sausage, which I haven't had in such a long time. <laughs> That's true. I've been going to uh, to lunch with my daughter, but we've been observing all their protocols. They want you to go in with a mask, even though you're going to take it off mm-hmm. to eat and sit at tables that are two tables away from any other table that's open. And we've been doing all those things. Amy has not done that. I think you went to a restaurant one time in the yeah. last 12 months. I was just kind of skeeved out about yeah. the whole thing. I mean, not counting carry out. There's been a lot of carry out yeah and like there's been a lot out. of parties and backyard karaoke backyard and karaoke. sub-zero parties and, <laughs> and the fire pit and all that stuff going it was so great but this morning yeah yeah wide open yeah no worries risk analysis is complete and that means good times for mother's day yes and uh, again this uh, it came up because we're getting back to normal you know we're doing more and we're planning more. There's going to be things coming up which folks so who are local to us and maybe even folks who aren't local to us yep. will be involved in. But we are having to take the lingering COVID question into account because COVID ain't gone. This is not over. People right. are still dying in ridiculous numbers. And and variants are popping up, surprising us with their their, I don't know, their ability to be contagious yeah. <laughs> even more. <laughs> And we're still having to deal with the question of, well, what do we do and what don't we do? What's our what's our risk posture? And also, what what are our friends and family doing? Because we've got friends and we've got family who are more cloistered than us. They're they're more cautious. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, one one and a younger person in particular who doesn't want to come out of the house and do things. Mm-hmm. Despite being fully vaccinated and despite all of us being fully vaccinated, we've got other friends who have expressed anger that the question would ever come up and uh, refuse to divulge their their vaccination status. And these aren't necessarily people who aren't going to be vaccinated. They're just angry that it's become a public issue. And I understand that, too. And, it, and it's reminded me that complicated things are complicated yes you know some of our friends may never ever be vaccinated for reasons which appear both rational and compelling depending on which doctors they're listening to which papers they're reading and add to this the risk of outsmarting ourselves by following a given particular group of people who believe a given particular group of things and regard certain evidence as compelling and other evidence as not to be trusted, often for political reasons. And it's complicated. It's a real challenge. And the only thing I can do in this context is accept that people are reaching their own best conclusions Yes. based on their own best reasoning Mm-hmm. And they will act accordingly. And though we disagree, one thing I don't expect, and I don't even want, is that anybody acts against their own rational best judgment. Mm-hmm. You know, as Ayn Rand observed, time and time again, you can't force, force a, mind. a mind. And, and that's, that, that's, that bears, all that bears repeating, because it's a complex issue. You know, you, I know um, I have friends um, who are... You know, not particularly philosophical, but they're somewhat more political, and they're like, "Yeah, let's force vaccines on people, um, or something." <laughs> and and you know, I have to kind of bring them off, bring them down off the ledge a bit, and say, "Do you really want a society where people are that brutish to each other and that um, you know harmful, do you, to, each harmful other. to each other, abusive to each other?" Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any friends who said that. I have not seen anybody say we should force vaccines. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've seen I've seen yeah. the meme going around saying I am in favor of forced. Except if you read it carefully, it actually says I am in favor of forced vacations. <laughs> and it's funny because That's there so will funny. be a, there will be a hundred people using swear words in answer to this meme. And I can't believe it. you said that because they didn't really read it right. It's very funny. <laughs> That's awful. It's also awful. You're right. <laughs> But they're that they're that quick to believe that the, even their very reasonable friends have said, oh, "Yeah, I believe in forced vacations." So it's very funny, but also again very terrible. <laughs> 
so yeah yeah i know you know so yeah it, it's been a complex issue this last uh year and two months or however um yeah and just, people again people are dealing with at least what they regard as reasonable and substantial evidence and science i mean smart people are disagreeing on this nobel prize winners are disagreeing on the efficacy of vaccines or the long-term dangers associated with vaccines or the significance of COVID or all of it. And, you know, I'm reminded that the odds of becoming a lightning strike victim. Right. Is what? Is one in 15,300. Mm -hmm. Which is a big number, but not that big compared to the general population. It kind of makes you think lightning strikes must be happening all the time. Right. Now, I think they include in that you're standing under a tree, you get a good jolt, even though it didn't strike you directly. Uh, that's the, the common kind of lightning strike, or you're in your vehicle and you're struck by lightning. But one in 15,300. And if that happened to you, and assuming that you survive it, you might reach a conclusion that you're a very lucky person. Mm -hmm. Or you might reach the conclusion that you're a very unlucky person. But the point is, you might ascribe significance to that, despite the fact that in any room full of 15,300 people, mm -hmm. which granted would probably be a concert venue or some yeah. sports stadium. How fun. <laughs> in any such room, there's probably somebody in there who's been struck by lightning. Yes. Just given the odds. And there's nothing special about him other than very rare things happen. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that, um, uh, that the flying spaghetti monster didn't will him to be struck? Just imagine if he had read <laughs> the, the I forget the name of the book, the, the book about the flying spaghetti monster that, that outlines the religion and the yeah. belief in, uh, uh, you know, pirates and beer and all the stuff that's part of that religion. Yes. And then he, goes, and then he said, well, I don't believe in this. If this is true, may I be struck by lightning? Mm -hmm. And you know, not necessarily the next day, but some point soon, he happened to be that one in 15,300 who got struck by lightning. But here's the thing. Enough of that. What are the odds of being struck by lightning twice in your lifetime? Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't do a study of this on my own, but at least according to a Google search, and you can run the numbers yourself, the odds of being struck twice by lightning are one in nine million, which seems pretty rare, except there's over 7 billion people on the planet, which means there's something under a thousand people, but they're out there who've been struck by lightning twice. Mm -hmm. Now, you're struck by lightning once, you start thinking, you know, it must be something lucky about me, or it must be something unlucky about me, or maybe God's trying to tell me something. But if you're struck by lightning twice, what do you believe about that? That, well, you know, the odds are one in nine million, but it was going to happen to somebody, so I guess it happened to me. A reasonable person would conclude that. But what are the odds? What are the odds that would happen to me? Now, I've said before, and I'll say it again, the same thing happens with all sorts of things where somebody says, well, we gave the joke about uh, Patty. Oh, Patty? Patty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Patty, but right around St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> right, right. you know, Patty is going to an important meeting downtown, very important meeting. And he's driving around the block and he can't find a place to park his car. And he drives around and he drives around. There's no lots that are open. He's late for this meeting. And he finally looks up to the heavens and says, God, God, if you please would give me a parking spot. I'll give up me drink. I'll give up the beer. I'll give up the women. Just give me a place to park me car. And he's driving around and a spot miraculously opens up. <laughs> he parks the car, looks up to heaven, says, never mind, I found one. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the opposite way of how a lot of people ascribe Just the opposite that, of what, what um, we're talking about here. You find that parking spot because you prayed to God and you think, it opened up because I prayed to God. Yeah. Now, parking spot's not one in nine million, but what about getting struck by lightning? Right. Or what about just happening to win that million dollars in the lottery ticket? Or what about just happening to things that are one in nine million, things that are one in even a million? 10,000, 1,000, 
and you think, well, what are the odds? Mm -hmm. It must have been because I rubbed that lucky rabbit's foot. Well, <laughs> how lucky was that for the rabbit? Or the, because I said that prayer. Or threw the salt over the shoulder, avoided let, going underneath ladders. Let's see what else. Um, but if somebody prays to God, mm -hmm. or Allah, or the flying spaghetti monster, yes. and that one in nine million thing then proceeds to happen. Right. How am I going to be able to convince him? Well, that was just chance. Right. Because it was going to happen to somebody. Yeah, but me? How do you... There, there's no way to argue statistics other than to say, well, here's the stats. It was going to happen to somebody. Yeah, but the odds are in 9 million to 1 that against it happening to me. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I feel like I'm up against when people give me links to 10 scientific papers about why spike proteins generated by RNA versus DNA mm -hmm. are going to be a problem two years from now. Mm, crystal ball magic. <laughs> well, it's not crystal ball magic. They've got 10 pieces of scientific evidence. Mm -hmm. saying that this is going to be an issue. Two years from now, and when, how, it's, an, when yeah. it's an issue, they will say, see, it was an issue. I told you so. Or two years from now, when it's not an issue. They said, well, I'm glad I erred on the side of caution. That's right. <laughs> they will. Well, my better friends, my honest friends, will. The, the rest of them will just sweep it aside because they'll be on to something else by then. That's true. Just like when Barack Obama had put 180,000 boxcars into the yards in Arizona because when there was the revolt after he was elected, he was going to round up all the gun owners, remember? Yes. Remember oh, when the remember United, did, the United did, States yeah. Postal Service bought over two million rounds of ammunition Yeah, yeah. because they weren't going to allow anybody else to have bullets? Yeah. I could go on. I could give you a dozen of these things, and I don't mean to just pick on the militia and the hard right. Yeah, yeah. I could so, do the same so thing from the left. So what you're trying to say is that just because a particular instance or, or fact or event fits a particular narrative, that there isn't actually causation going on. More than that. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I'm not meaning to pick on anybody who believed any of this stuff. Right. All I'm saying is it is a challenge yeah. when confronted with this kind of... It's not even anecdotal evidence, it's context-laden evidence. Right. Where you accept a certain context and you refuse to consider another context that clashes with it. And again, I see reasonable and honest people doing this in regard to really complicated matters like COVID. Yes. And the best I can do is say, well, they're on their journey. They're on, you're on I never liked that expression. It sounds so subjective, but in this case, it's exactly right. They are on I their use, journey. Well, I use you. Everybody knows I use that all the time. Right. You know that and, person is on their own journey. Bless their heart. <laughs> well, but but you don't use it, and I don't use it in a dismissive way. No. It's really more a matter of when they're done with that yeah, journey. I hope that we'll all meet where the paths right. come back together. Right. We're just on different roads. We're going to end up in the same location eventually. Yeah. Um, and that's that's great. Uh, yeah. Um, well, before I get into, I want to talk a little bit about analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis. Yeah, and unless you've got something yes, else to say. Yes, and fingernails. Yeah, and fingernails. So, but before that, before we get into that, I just want to read some of these funny, funny comments because our friends. I have been who going on a tear, us, haven't I? I've missed this. What did I miss? Because <laughs> uh, so, the comments are often the best part of this show. <laughs> it's so true. Jim says, "My conclusion is." We're not getting out of this alive. Well, you're not the first Jim to you know that. You are not the first Jim to say that. <laughs> Jim Morris in the Doors was very, uh, very happy of oh, quoting. Right. Who was he quoting? Because it was somebody else, uh, Jack Kerouac or somebody. Right. Nobody gets out of here alive. Yes. Nobody gets ah, out of this. We're not getting out of well, here alive. What? Pff, memento mori. We're all mortal. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer says, I love spaghetti. That's in relation to Flying Spaghetti Monster. It's related to Flying Spaghetti Monster. That's awesome. Mary Lee says, I am thrilled to have been vaccinated also though I never felt very isolated. I really like Zoom and I have friends and family. I never stopped hugging. Was that smart? It seemed like a good idea at the time. Well, and it, there was are, smart. it was smart and it you was know, calculated we all, risk. We all calculated our risk and decided yes. what was appropriate. 
Yeah. And oh, <laughs> Linda says, set back the chain letter. <laughs> set back the chain letter. And Jennifer said, poor Patty. Now, I thought Patty was lucky. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He got that. He got that parking spot. He even didn't even, even have before to rely he on had to. That's right. Even before God gave it to him. Right. Ha ha ha. <laughs> and Jim says, uh, "Careful what you ask for, especially if it's God you're talking to." That's right. <laughs> and Jennifer says, "You mean the sun doesn't rise because the rooster crows?" <laughs> classic. You know that goes Very back to classic. Chanticleer. From Edmund Rostand, the same author who wrote uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, mm -hmm. also wrote the story of Chanticleer, who uh, it was the rooster who thought that it was his job to get the sun up in the morning. That was made into a uh, animated film. Uh, I forget the name of it. Somebody will comment. Okay, yes, comment about that if you know more about that than us. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So um, we were talking about these sorts of things, you know. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, uh, uh, applying or um, yeah. causation to things that are actually not quite, you know, re linked in reality. Well, I had put that under the perils of high IQ. Yes. Because yes. Um, in the context, of, I've, I've, I've had online interactions with people who are high IQ. Mm -hmm. um, and not just Mensa people. I shouldn't say not just Mensa people. Not just the two percenters, but the really, really high IQ types. Mm. And they are amazingly good at outsmarting themselves. <laughs> if you're smarter, we have a lot of friends who are, who are smart, are smart themselves. Well, if if you're smart smarter themselves. than the scientists whose conclusions you're supposed to trust, yeah, and you know it, you tend to be distrustful of those scientists. True. At least that's what I see. Again, I'm not one of these five nines types. These are people who join clubs I can't get into. Five nine, I don't know even know. I don't even know what that is. Oh, the five nines. Well, yeah. well, people who are in Mensa are in the upper two percent of IQ, ninety eight percent. Right. There are people who are in the ninety nine point nine nine nine. Above ninety nine point nine nine nine, that's five nines. So the five nines are the people who are in that point zero zero one percent. And again, these people are so smart. They will outsmart themselves. They will, by their own logic, essentially transcend reality, which means drop reality. So I've seen people yeah. think themselves into a position which they don't believe anybody less intelligent than them can think them, or they won't let anybody else less intelligent than them. It, it's a bit of a trap. And, I, and yeah. I've seen it again. I've seen you know, high IQ people say, there are reasons I can't be happy. There are reasons I can't find romance. There are reasons why I can't live the way less intelligent people do. It's the strangest thing to me. I've written long posts on it. Maybe we'll talk about it sometime. I didn't mean to get too much into the perils of high IQ, <laughs> but analysis paralysis is a thing. It's yeah. one thing to say, I yeah. want X. It's another thing to say, well, if I do, well, give us an example. Uh, well, I just want to add one more thing um, yeah. is, uh, you know, you can't, because, and I've done this before, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm particularly high IQ, although Robert thinks that I am, but I haven't actually taken the test because I just don't want to know. Um, so basically, what you have here is, you know, this analysis paralysis, especially ha if you have an extraordinarily complex topic, well, whether, whether it's politics or COVID or medical issues or whatever, um, you can go down a rabbit hole and find all sorts of causations and, and associations and links and say, oh my gosh, this is, this is where this is leading me. I, this makes sense. This is adding up. Um, and then you kind of, you're in this in a granular way and you can't, you know, see the forest for the trees as it were. And that, uh, you know, it, it reminds me of using Occam's razor. You know, what is the, um, uh, what is the most likely explanation yeah, for something? The simplest solution is the most likely solution. Right. And they kind of forget that. And sometimes I kind of forget that, too. I've been in that situation as well. Um, yeah. Mary Lean says, uh, post hoc ergo proc... I'm sorry, propter hoc. Yes, whatever follows must have been caused by what came before. Yes, Clearly. yes. Since uh, since event Y followed event X, event Y must have been caused by event X. Right. Yeah, that association going on there. Well, let me tell you a little bit about how I 
go through analysis paralysis with regard to um well this will be a good example because jennifer writes overthinking question mark yes it is possible to overthink you know whenever i pick up a, a bottle nail polish and you know it settles and and there's you know it, it needs to be shaken i'm like i gotta shake these things do they need to be shaken <laughs> no <laughs> Is it better that they're shaken than stirred? <laughs> it's better that they're shaken because I, I'm, com I'm compulsive about things. I'm a perfectionist about things. And one of the things that, <laughs> when my, it makes me laugh because I'm kind of embarrassed by this. Um, so I've got this nail rehab thing, a strengthener, right? Nail rehab. Because I had, you know, Sally Henson or whatever. They said and my nails had to go to rehab. I said... <laughs> Yes, 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 yes apparently. Yes. Okay. No, I say no, 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 not yet, because I'm overthinking something here. So this goes on the bottom, and I, I think the idea here is that this will help strengthen my nails, which it probably won't, because it has alcohol in it. So who am I kidding? My, you know, why am I, why am I even using this? So, you know, okay, so this is, this is my crazy talk going on here. You know, I'm analyzing it, and it's paralyzing me. And then I've got this wonderful blue nail polish here. It's Insta-Dry. It's Insta -dry. like the dry. easiest thing in the world. Great. It, it may not be the most durable. Um, it will chip. And uh, oh. it's this beautiful blue color and everything. I just love it. And I want to paint my toenails and my nails. Good. Go for it. And um, That's simple, right? But the thing is, is that I because it chips so easily, and I have to really take that into consideration, and... I um, so oh. I have to strategize about exactly when I'm going to be putting it on. Sounds like it's getting complicated. You know, I don't want to put this on right before I shower because that's going to um, affect the durability of the polish and it'll chip faster. And I don't want that, so I have to make sure that I do that after I shower, um, but not too far, like or not too not so early before bed because I don't want to go to bed with wet nails. I want to make sure because I don't want to be waking up with with you know things that, that are streaked and everything on my nails, and that would not be good because then I have to redo the nails, right? Sounds complicated. So so now for the last two months, I think, I these things have been sitting out here in the living room waiting for me to paint my nails. I'm going to shake them again. Did you say months? <laughs> two months. I'm just waiting for the right time. That's all. <laughs> just waiting for so, the right moment. So, so as you can see, my nails are bare. They're not painted. And the thing is, is Neither that I. I, I, I just, I just got to, what I need to do is I really need to write all this down and introspect and do some like stream of conscious journaling to get it all out there. Because, to decide when to paint your nails or to decide what to do about overthinking painting your nails? Yes. <laughs> the second. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. One. Okay. The, this, how, how to get around this whole overthinking, this analysis paralysis. That, you know, and, and what's the Occam's razor solution for this? How about I just do this now and figure out the consequences afterwards? How about that? Because I want my nails to be painted. I want them to be pretty. Yeah. I and like, I want to see some color on my hand and everything. I liked Tony Robbins' answer to that, which is make decisions and be willing to say after every decision... This is the decision I'm making, and I'm committed to it. And if this is a mistake, then this is the mistake I'm committed to making. Yes. So the thing like is, that. is that I've got a hangnail now on my um, my index finger, my left hand, right? So I've got to file that down before I do anything on my nails. You know, actually paint them, right? Right? No. <laughs> no. If that would stop you, then don't do it. If it wouldn't stop you, then get to it and get it out of the way. Damn right. But anyway. Just ask yourself, what would a really decisive version of me do right the, now? There is an example. Yes. And that, that's the kind Analysis of thought process, paralysis. process that I think a lot of people get into, mm -hmm. especially when... Overthinking. It, you know, especially when no one has... when You know, when... And remember, if you shake too hard, you will get bubbles, and bubbles are bad. That's what our commenters are saying. They're adding. They're piling on here. These nails are never I, going to be I painted. Have to shake it, because the, if the if but I don't if you shake, shake it, you just shake it slow. You just want to blend it. If I don't shake it, then the bottle will not be pretty. <laughs> I, I have okay. to have it look nice. Okay. Now, I... now, now we've gone way beyond uh, reasonable here. I want the bottle to look nice while I'm doing it. Yes. Of course. <laughs> now I see. All right, let's get it. <laughs> Jennifer 
says, I'm coming over <laughs> to paint them for you. You know, it's funny. I, I have joked with uh, guys online. Guys complain that guys have it so hard. Because guys have to go out there and do all the tough jobs and all the dangerous jobs. And women have it so easy. I'm saying, you have no idea how easy you have it as a guy. <laughs> you have no idea how... I mean, male privilege is a thing. My God. <laughs> Forget, you know, the we talked about birth control pills and, you know, the plumbing and monthly issues. But even just... you got to paint your nails. You've got to wear... <laughs> You've got to wear hardware that keeps your chest in the right place just to walk out the front door. <laughs> the things women have to do. Man, am I privileged? Yes, I am privileged. I don't have to spend half oh an hour God. figuring out when to paint my nails. It's hard. It's hard. Linda says, I'm sorry, guys. I'm cracking up. Linda says, put plastic baggies on your hands when you go to bed. That's right. That's right. That'll keep your nail polish from... Uh, Getting 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 messed up by the bed sheets and and you don't want to get nail polish in your bed sheets either so yeah that's what you do you put baggies on oh lord it's so easy being a guy oh now Jim Jim chimes in he's like is analysis paralysis um, uh, and uh, OCD um, similar at root maybe <laughs> I don't know well. I think uh, OCD people certainly engage in analysis paralysis. I don't doubt that. But I wouldn't call you OCD. No. Um, That's a little different. I do like washing my hands quite a bit. But, you know, I'm just, you know, fastidious. That's all. But I've never noticed you, like, scrubbing and no. wearing your skin out. Anything no. really. Or even, or even doing it so much that it becomes an imposition. You're spending five minutes. Where's Amy? Well, you know, in the restaurant. <laughs> no, I don't see any of that. Jim, I, f I finally stopped laughing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so right. that's what we've been talking about. And that's why when I made the topic chance, the, the, the things that can happen just by virtue of life being complicated. Yes. Whether it's getting lost in the analysis of what we should do when. Right. Or our interpretation of the meaning of things. Life is hard. Life is complicated. And that's why I tend to think most people, even people who aren't at the top of their game or who we wouldn't think are real heroes, most people are decent. Mm -hmm. Most people are trying their best. Yes. But, you know, life is hard. Yes. And uh, Narendra had posted on my wall, presumptuous guy posts on my wall. <laughs> Just kidding. He's, he posts it a he's, meme. He's benevolently assertive. Yes. That's right. He posted this charming meme from Robert Heinlein. And it was an excerpt from an essay that I had read before called This I Believe. Mm. Um, and, and it's a and short article. The that meme was, was on a on short one. And, radio, uh, I think. It was, he was. And, yeah, Heinlein talking. read this on the radio. Mm. And then his wife read it on his behalf when he received an award posthumously after Aww. he had passed away. And uh, I'm going to read this real quick. I don't know if I'll read the whole thing, but it's, it's just a page. Robert Heinlein said, I am not going to talk about religious beliefs, but about matters so obvious it has gone out of style to mention them. I believe in my neighbors. I know their faults, and I know their virtues far outweigh their faults. Take Father Michael down the road a piece. I'm not of his creed. But I know the goodness and charity and loving kindness that shine in his daily actions. I believe in Father Mike. And if I'm tr in trouble, I'll go to him. My next door neighbor is a veterinary doctor. Doc will get out of bed after a hard day to help a stray cat. No fee, no prospect of a fee. I believe in Doc. I believe in my townspeople. You can knock on any door in our town. Say, I'm hungry, and you will be fed. Our town is no exception. I found the same ready charity everywhere. For the one who says, well, to heck with you, I got mine. There are a hundred, a thousand who will say, sure, pal, sit down. I know that despite all warnings against hitchhikers, I can step to the highway, 
thumb for a ride, and in a few minutes, a car or truck will stop, and someone will say, yeah, climb in, Mac. How far are you going? I believe in my fellow citizens. Our headlines are splashed with crime. Yet for every criminal, there are 10,000 honest, decent, kindly men. If it were not so, no child would live to grow up. Businesses could not go from day to day. Decency is not news. It's buried in the obituaries. But it is a force stronger than crime. I believe in the patient gallantry of nurses, in the tedious sacrifices of teachers. I believe in the unseen and unending fight against desperate odds that goes on quietly in almost every home in the land. I believe in the honest craft of workmen. Take a look around you. There never were enough bosses to check up on all that work. From Independence Hall to the Grand Coulee Dam, these things were built level and square by craftsmen who were honest in their bones. I believe that almost all politicians are honest. For every bribed alderman, there are hundreds of politicians, low paid or not paid at all, doing their level best, without thanks or glory, to make our system work. If this were not true, we would never have gotten past the 13 colonies. I believe in and am proud to belong to the United States. Despite shortcomings, from lynchings to bad faith in high places, our nation has had the most decent and kindly internal practices and foreign policies to be found anywhere in history. And finally, I believe in my whole race, yellow, white, black, red, brown. In the honesty, courage, intelligence, durability, and goodness of the overwhelming majority of my brothers and sisters everywhere on this planet. I am proud to be a human being. I believe that we have come this far by the skin of our teeth, that we always make it just by the skin of our teeth, but that we will always make it survive, endure. I believe that this hairless embryo with the aching oversized brain case and the opposable thumb, this animal barely up from the apes, will endure. Will endure longer than his home planet. Will spread out to the other planets, to the stars and beyond, carrying with him his honesty, his insatiable curiosity, his unlimited courage, and his noble, essential decency. This I believe with all my heart. This is Robert Heinlein, writing in 1952. His wife reread that in 1988. That's lovely. You're getting a lot of compliments from people about your narration. Well, it's, it's a great one to read. I had written, because it came up on my anniversaries, on my memories on Facebook, I'd hate to make the mistake... I'd hate to make the mistake of assuming that my social circle, my wife and daughter, my friends and family, my co-workers, and the people I may meet day to day are indicative of the moral and intellectual stature of people in general. But I'd hate far, far more to make the opposite mistake. And Amy answered, we have the best people. <laughs> which, which was the opposite of the point I was making. So I wrote, well, there is that. And the point is, we assume that the decent people that we know, because we have selected them, we pruned and curated our friends list in real life. Yes. And some of us are smart enough to do that online too. Because they are our people, they are exceptional. And they are exceptional. But they're not the exception. You know, Heinlein wrote it 70 years ago, and it's still true today. Because just as he pointed out logically, the world wouldn't keep working. Businesses wouldn't keep functioning. Things wouldn't keep happening. The wheels of the world would not be kept turning if people weren't essentially good and decent. So despite all of the challenges that we're still facing coming out of COVID days and and the challenges that we're going to have 
coming back together after all of this. Mm -hmm. The challenges to all of the social fun we intend to have this year. We'll see everybody at Ocon and we're going to be traveling in a couple of weeks and <laughs> despite to, all of those challenges we're going to exhaust ourselves <laughs> well, we'll tell you happen. all about it when we wrap it up yeah despite all of that it remains true that the wheels of the world are kept turning by virtue yes yes and uh i would like to say mm -hmm. thank you? you oh you're welcome robert well thank you amy <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you, Echo. Happy Mother's yeah. Day. Thank you to my yeah. mother, Sonia. Yes. But no, thank you to everybody, to every decent person out there doing their honest best to live a decent life. You know and that's I'm, just about everybody. You know what I'm going to be doing next year? And I'm going to make a note of this somehow. I'll have some kind of note that flashes up on, on me on, on my phone or something. I need to um, find a, a mom. I would like to have a mom again. Uh, my mom died about 10 years ago. And I would like to have a mom so that, you know, next Mother's Day, I can send um, that person uh, some flowers and some candy and a card and um, and say Happy Mother's Day. Well, you can mom. do those things with my mom. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, although, you, although you as, you, that, that as, you, as you pointed out, my mother... My mother was more mom, mommy, momish, maternal, maternal, yeah, sure. Um, when we were kids, yeah, right. And uh, then she, once we were all adults and out on our own, she sort of grew into that role. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for somebody who'll still baby talk you, and <laughs> and I think you are, and it, not literally, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, I need to pinch my cheek. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I can see. I can see what you're looking for. You know, I can get all of that from my mom. I know you, know, you can. I, I, can I know you can. Draw her can. back into uh, remembering. Yeah. I just, I just we, don't we were think... a family of, she had four kids and I had a stepbrother as well. But I was the youngest of the four. So the baby, you know. Well, well, if you're listening to this, Sonia, and you um, want to baby talk, talk me, you certainly are welcome to. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, no. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> So with with all this said, the, the challenges of chance and, and over analysis and you know some of these, I guess nowadays they call them failure modes. Um, my homework for this week. My homework for this week is to ground myself. I'm not allowed to leave the house. No, no, no. To ground my beliefs in the nitty gritty of the daily grind. I talked before about, you know, you got to be willing to get dirt under your fingernails. And here I mean the facts on the ground, the stuff of life, what some would call reality. But I think that's not visceral enough. You need to ground yourself in reality. Reality, I don't know, sounds too big, sounds too highfalutin, sounds too philosophical. You know, we sometimes go back to the question, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Or if your philosophy is so right, why aren't you all rich? And, you know, I am in many ways. Mm-hmm. And I've written about that at length. I'll save you from reading that post again. But this week I will be rechecking my progress and course correcting as needed. I'll be journaling about doing my nails. Yes. Well, I've asked recently philosophy, hey philosophy, what have you done for me lately? Da -da 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 -da. Ooh, yeah. So my goal this week is to revisit that question and my answers and to true up as needed, to adjust. I know that's pretty abstract, but that's in the nature of the assignment. To be a little more specific, in my case, I've already made a few adjustments. So for example, I've adjusted my financials. People know that I left a lucrative IT career in order to become a professional bum, a uh, trophy husband. Uh, intellectual and uh, there's more to come so because life has copious large amounts of random chance as we said so we need to compensate by being rational fully focused fully intentional so that's what I'm going to be doing my post-it note for the week says 
philosophy, what is it for? Hmm. I asked this recently on my Clubhouse show. What is philosophy for? You know, Ayn Rand had the lecture, philosophy, who needs it? Yes. But it's worth asking yourself, what is philosophy for? Those of us who are into philosophy, interested in philosophy, talk philosophy, argue philosophy, what is philosophy for? Is it for arguing? Is it for arguing politics all day on the internet? Obviously not. Well, I shouldn't say obviously. Some people seem to get a real charge out of that. But for me, philosophy is about getting rich. Mm. Not just in dollars and cents. Yes. Yes. Philosophy is about living well. About, so, yeah. I will be revisiting the question, philosophy, what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. And my goal this week is to revisit the question and the answers I've provided so far and to true up as needed. You're welcome to join me on that. Either way, my post-it note for the week does say, I'll put it up for the camera again, philosophy, what is it for? <laughs> Anything in the oh, chat that I've missed yes, before we yes. wind down here? Holly says, philosophy is for thinking. Philosophy is for thinking. Yep. Uh, Among oh, other oh, things. Oh, oh, and Linda Cordaire has volunteered to be my new mother. Oh, really? Yeah, of Linda Cordaire of, of Cordaire.com, of Quinn Cordaire Fine Art Gallery. For if all you of your call her up, needs. though, yes. if you call her on the phone and say, Mama Linda, and is she going to say, <laughs> oh, how is my sweet girl? Because I know that's what you're looking for. I know that's well, what you're looking for. Well, not yeah, literally maybe, those words, but something like that. Maybe a little bit like that. Well, I, th I think... <laughs> Actually, you, all, I, all I, I want think, is to send... I'm going to send Linda something um, either soon or next year. It's all a surprise. So we'll see. You're trying not to give anything away here, aren't you? No. <laughs> I feel like I should go to the kitchen and get the towels she sent us. Oh, my God. I need to, what I need to do is put a good picture up online. Linda They're just adorable. said that she will. Um, uh, oh my goodness! Well, take her up on it. Push her. <laughs> See how far you can get with this. See how, just she how say, much love how can is, you get? How is my sweet daughter Amy doing today? I bet you're doing oh, so well because you're so sweet. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't even want to get. Let's not get too deep into it here. I don't want to. But we have some uh, other really wonderful comments here. Jim says, uh, with regard to Heinlein, an expression of pure benevolence. That's that's your reading it. Nice read, Robert. Incidentally, uh, quote: This I believe can be found in the story, speech, and essay collection Requiem, Requiem by yes. Robert A. Heinlein and others. Excellent. Very nice. Yes. And. Um, uh, Emily says, you sounded a lot like Paul Harvey in your intonation patterns. Paul Harvey. <laughs> good day. Good day. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I can't do a real good Paul Harvey, but I appreciate the compliment. I do appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, Emily appreciates finding a new mother. She's a, she's a wonderful endeavor. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Thank a few you people, very much. A few people have sadly, I shouldn't say sadly, have posted online that, uh, yeah, they didn't have the best relationship with their mother. Yeah. Uh, one gentleman in particular kind of surprised me with that. Oh. And, uh, yeah, I feel bad for the Because I didn't have a, a father figure in my life, but I did have my mother. And, uh, I mean, I had, there were there were men around. And uh, I, I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but, but my mother was there. So I, I have some, some idea of what it would be like not to have one of your parents. And yeah. you have my sympathy is my only point. And, yeah, uh, and much love absolutely. from us. Oh. As folks are expressing that. Linda says, hi, sweet Amy. Love you. Is your homework done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see what you set yourself up for? And Amy's not even the one who assi who gets assigned homework every week. That's what I need to do is I need to make you do my the same homework I'm doing. And do. Linda do. is going to make sure that you actually get it done. <laughs> yes. That's great. So I have, to, I have to answer, what is philosophy for? Okay, it's for uh, spaceship maintenance because you remember in, in the article that Ian Rand wrote, it was uh, oh that's you know, right you, you land you, on a planet you, you, you crash land on a planet you you don't know what this planet is and you and see a, full, you a life form spaceship. coming towards you and you're like hmm. yeah, somebody else will t they'll tell me what to do <laughs> tell you me are never do. heard from again <laughs> yes we need a punchline to all of this because since Paul Harvey was mentioned Jim's now saying what's the rest of the story. And I don't have a clever punchline to say. And now you know the, the rest, rest of the story. story. Yeah, oh, sorry, I don't have it. 
Emily Maybe says, next week, next five minutes, we'll have the rest of the story. Yeah, Emily says, I've had a life full of trauma. Oh, my gosh. I, I feel for you. Yeah, um, we, and she we, says, we I, need, I need philosophy to be as happy and productive as I can be. I need it. Yes. And that's exactly how I feel, too. If yes. I didn't have it, oh, my gosh. I don't know. I, I, it would have been bad. It would have been really bad. And we have some friends who are facing... Um, just just physical medical challenges and uh, mm-hmm. you know who you are and and believe me you have our sympathy I am um, I am the last person to deny that I am fortunate I think privilege is the wrong word it's used in so many bad ways yeah. these days but yeah. but I absolutely uh, sympathize with those who are facing challenges that some of us may never know right especially after being in so much pain last month following my uh, accidents and, and anyway believe me we you, you have our sympathy which you know is probably worth about what it costs to say it but but it is well we're thinking it is of real you, we're thinking of you out there who, who, who are going through that yes and not to go too long but your comments are uh, mean so much it's to us wonderful. that we do appreciate that I just want to wrap up by saying that as always show notes will be posted within 10 minutes at the end of the show there's a few good ones in there listen to those talks uh, especially the Alex Epstein one. Um, and of course, it's not about the nail. <laughs> I, that one's a little... I, if, nah, in modern Don't times, nobody, will, nobody will, will be creeped out by it. Even though somebody like me who's like super sensitive, the first time I saw it, it's like, whoa. <laughs> but uh, it's very funny. It's just prosthetic, darling. It's, it's not real. It's very funny. And it makes the same point we made earlier in a very funny way. So, show notes will be posted within 10 minutes of the end of the show. If you have any comments or questions, suggestions for future episodes, you can leave them in the 5 Minutes with Robert Nacer Facebook group. If you would like to support the show financially, thank you so much to those of you who already do. It means the world to us. You can do that at patreon.com or if you want to make a one-time contribution through paypal.me slash robertnacer. Links to all of that. Show notes, Questions, comments, Facebook group, support links are all at robertnacer.com. One-stop shopping for everything you want to do to interact with this show. Mm-hmm. Yes, so simple. And I just want to say, I love you, Mama Linda. Mwah! I love you so very much. I feel I feel your warm love are you feeling all around it? me. <laughs> are, you, are you feeling a little bit of having a mommy again? That's... Uh... That's that's great. It's Mother's I, Day. What, yes, what more and I can't wait to give you a hug. What better a Mother's Day <laughs> gift could you ask for? So, as always, Amy and I, and apparently Amy even more than me this time, <laughs> as always, we wish you success. We wish you flourishing. We wish you happiness. Yes. We wish you a firm grasp of what is a choice and what is chance. Mm-hmm. And as always, we do wish you love. Mm-hmm.